Well, welcome to the shop. I've been busy as you can see. I took the barrel and, and put it between the plates and we've got a click in there and, and a ratchet. And uh, anyway, uh, that's what I've been up to. And I've taken videos of everything, uh, but today I just started doing the editing. So uh, I think I'm going to make uh, the work that I've done so far into three videos. And uh, this first video is going to deal uh, uh, mainly with the building of the arbor itself right here. Uh, the one that goes through the barrel. And, uh, and then the second one I will uh, put the spring in. Uh, that'll be a separate video. Uh, that spring's a monster. And then uh, the last video uh, uh, I'll deal with the uh, building of the ratchet and the click and the click screw uh, right there. Yeah, but uh, let me take these plates apart and give you a look at the uh, the barrel and the arbor. There's the barrel there with the uh, end plate coming off there. Let me pull that uh, end plate off. And you can see the mainspring in there, and it's hooked very closely to the arbor there. That's got there's a hook on the arbor. And uh, that's a uh, monstrous mainspring. That's a huge mainspring. Very powerful. And uh, I've already showed you how I made the, uh, uh, the mainspring barrel in a 17 uh, minute video uh, that I've uh, posted on my, whoops, my channel. I'll give you a link to it in the description. Uh, but for this video, I've, uh, I've knocked it down to only a three minute look at how I built the barrel. It just seems strange not to have it with the, the building of the arbor. Uh, so we're going to start off here with, the, uh, with a small uh, video on uh, how I built the barrel itself. Alright, I'm just facing off a piece of uh, pipe here. and It's a little wavy on the outside, so I'm getting a look at it. I'm doing a little uh, registering to just see how deep that wave is. That looks pretty good. So now I'm boring the inside and this is a very thin boring bar uh, so I'm going to make lots of spring passes. Um, the finish in the video here just doesn't seem to look very good but it's quite good. Now we're registering it so I can work on the outside so we're holding it from the inside so I can work on the outside now and bringing it down to a nice finish here. And now I'm bringing it down to cutting it down to length. And we're over at the uh, super glue arbor here. We're going to put the end plate on there, a piece of quarter inch uh, brass to make the end plate with. First we'll get it down to the OD we need. And now we've center drilled it in this last reaming hole and marking it for the offset. So we'll put this little ledge in here that'll hold the barrel. And there we go. And uh, some small screws holding it all together. And, of course, I use a hockey puck here to do the tapping of the holes. Got it now over to the buffing machine using a little Tripoli on it. And this is over to the uh, dental lathe to do the final uh, rouge on it. Now we've got to drill a big hole in here for the fusey cable to come through. And it's got to be like a keyhole. So we'll file it out here with some of these needle files and get it down looking like a open it up there now we got to add a little bit of a curve in here so there's no hard corners you want that cable to come out of there nice you don't want it to wear and chafe or anything so we'll get that corner right now we'll test it with the cable and uh, that'll tell us how we're doing and I put a hook inside there I made that hook out of drill rod and we'll cut it to size and then we'll rivet it in with a ball peen hammer. And I'm 
going to file some of it off, but I'm going to leave quite a bit of it there because uh, that's a uh, monstrous mainspring. And here we are back over buffing it up, and there's the finished product uh, for now. Uh, yeah, there it is. There's your rivet. And as is with all projects, uh, we're starting off here at the uh, the bandsaw, uh, cutting our first piece. Uh, we're going to be working between centers, so we're going to uh, uh, face both ends and uh, center drill it. Yeah, we'll be taking this piece on and off of the lathe uh, to test fit it. So uh, working between centers uh, was the way to go. This is a standard Sherline faceplate. Uh, I've added some 1032 screws and nuts there as counterweights uh, to keep the whole thing balanced and spinning true. Now I've already made the uh, last skim pass on this, but I'm truing up the rod, uh, the center holes with the rod, and uh, I'm just making a pass here to, to show you how I did it. Uh, I don't believe there's much metal, if any metal, coming off at this point. Uh, the rod is nice and true between the centers. Now we're cutting the first of the two shoulders on this end of the arbor. And uh, this is the uh, uh, part that goes, uh, uh, this is the square part now, but that first part was uh, what goes through the, uh, uh, the end piece on the barrel. This will be the square part of it. This will be square eventually. That fits pretty good. that transfer gauge to measure the inside length of the barrel so that we can cut the, uh, the shoulders needed on our arbor. And now we're making our first shoulder on the, uh, the opposite side. Now we'll check the fit of our arbor there. That looks good. Now the shake is the uh, uh, amount of loose space between the, the two uh, caps. And the shake should be a 1 64th of an inch. And it spins good. There's the shake there. Yep. Okay. Everything's good. And now for the uh, to mark off the, uh, the next uh, shoulder. And this is the shoulder between the plates. I've just taken the measurement from uh, W.R. Smith's book, uh, construction book, and I'll use the register pins, uh, either side of the register pins, uh, for the other measurement to keep on the center line. And there we go. And I've got it mounted in the middle of my vise on this, uh, my aluminum plate there. My aluminum hold down plate. Now this shows only a couple of seconds, but I took quite a bit of time getting this in uh, exactly on center line and stuff. Uh, pay close attention to that. 
always just going on starting off with a uh, center game. I believe it was a series of uh, four or five drills uh, to get the hole where I wanted it. And then make sure that it's uh, round and then when you finish it off with the finishing round. I got the barrel arbor in there. It's supposed to be one sixty-fourth of an inch of shake in there. This I need to trim the end, this end, and this end here I need to square it. So that's what we'll be doing now. There's the brief trim on that one end. Just a couple of passes. And I've got the uh, spin indexer inside my vise on my mill and uh, the spin indexer is nice because it allows it's, it's held in a collet and it can go all the way through the spin indexer unlike with the uh, rotary table I'm doing a, f a clean up on the uh, the mill passes there, but I'm not going to get it down to uh, uh, the final thing. When I make the uh, the key at the end, uh, there'll be a lot of work on this, so I'll do the final finish on that later. And it's still in, now I've got it in a, uh, a ER25 block in the in the vise. We're going to uh, center drill it for the hook. tapping it here and then finally I have to put a 45 degree chamfer in it so that the hook will sit nicely now we're going to start the uh, burnishing and polishing section I like these little foam back uh, uh, sanding pads. They're over a thousand grit. Uh, now burnishing is polishing, but it's also the work hardening of uh, the metallic surface uh, to get you a, a nice uh, uh, finish, which will last longer than one that hasn't actually been burnished. Because uh, uh, in clock and watch making, uh, you want to, uh, how long the clock or watch will run is, is that's how the bearings will wear over time. This is a double-ended burnisher. On one end we have a pivot file, a very fine pivot file. On the other end you have the burnishing end. And uh, you can see that it's actually a parallelogram so that it can get into the corners. And this one that works on the top is called the right-handed one. And we also make a left-handed one if you want to work from the bottom. So I'm, uh, I'm using the pivot file right now to clean it all up. The pivot file really sets it up so that when you start using the burnisher end of it, it's all set up and ready to go. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm getting a nice finish on there with the, uh, uh, the uh, pivot file. Now, when you're burnishing, you want to make sure you use an oil or a lubricant. I use clock oil, the same clock oil that I use on uh, all the pivots. Um, so it's kind of being burnished right in there and I can see the uh, I have that white piece of paper down there and I can see the oil and how much black is in the oil and I can see what I'm, what's happening to the metal by looking at the oil that's coming off of my burnishing rod there kind of helps me feel where I am and there we go let's clean that off get a look at it And there's the finished uh, arbor. And now we've got that center hole tapped to 1032, so now we need to make a hook. Starting off with drill rod. We won't harden the drill rod. 
uh, but I do like it's nice and hard. Makes a nice screw. Now I've got a die in there, and I've actually already run this die through there once. This is just the uh, I'm just polishing it up kind of now, right now to give you a look at what I was doing. Now I've reversed the die. I, the, the, you know, start this end with the tapered end. Now I've reversed it, and I've got the non-tapered end in there, and I'm putting it in there because that's going to allow me to get those last couple of turns in there to get the threads right up to my shoulder where I want it. So let me tighten this back up. And we'll probably get another good two turns in there to get that thread right up to the shoulder. And I'm using a compound on the back side with a bit upside down if that looks a little foreign to you. And uh, we're just cut cutting that 45 degree uh, uh, chamfer in there. cutting this off a little fatter than what I normally would but that, <laughs> that that spring that main spring is quite a spring uh, there's a lot of power there so I held it in there with this uh, uh, thread lock the red thread lock Loctite and we'll trim off the end of there And now we'll take a file to it. And now we reverse it so we can work on the hook a little bit here. Took a lot of time on this in forming this hook. Uh, you sure you don't want the hook to d damage the uh, spring in any way. And there you go. And now you can see the arbor in place with the spring in there and the hook's got it. And uh, looking pretty good. Well, that pretty much brings to an end on the making of the uh, mainspring barrel arbor. And uh, I do want to remind you that uh, there is a 17 minute uh, uh, construction video of making the mainspring barrel on uh, my YouTube channel and I'll put a uh, link to it in the description uh, in case you'd like more information on how the barrel was made. Now in the next video I think what we're going to do or I know what we're going to do is the spring is already in there and I've got all the uh, photographs done and uh, I'll start going through them and putting together the video of how the spring got in there and setting it up. That spring is a pretty, it's a monstrous spring. It's uh, uh, just barely fit in the sleeve that I have for my mainspring winder. So it's, uh, it's, quite the, uh, it's quite the spring. So that's what we're going to do on the next video. And I hope I'll see you then and I want to thank you a lot for stopping by and uh, uh, if you have any questions or anything, sure, uh, leave them under the comments. Thanks a lot now. Bye.